Properties of Addition and Multiplication We can use the properties of operations to help us evaluate expressions. The commutative property of addition says that we can add in any order. 5 plus 1 equals 6, and 1 plus 5 equals 6. They're equal to each other because they have the same sum. It doesn't matter the order that they're added in. The associative property of addition tells us we can group the add-ins differently and the sum is going to stay the same. If we need to add 1 plus 2 plus 3 and the 1 plus 2 are grouped together, that is 3 plus 3, that's 6. And if the 2 plus 3 are grouped together, that's a 5 plus 1 is equal to 6. Now it doesn't work for subtraction and I'll explain that near the end of the video. The identity property of addition tells us if we add 0 to a number, that sum is that number. Its identity stays the same. doesn't matter what number we're adding to 0, it keeps its identity. See that? That number stays the same. Now for the commutative property of multiplication, we can multiply in any order. 5 times 3 is going to be equal to 3 times 5. They both equal 15. So the commutative property of addition told us we can add in any order. The commutative property of multiplication tells us we can multiply in any order. And the associative property of multiplication tells us if we group the factors differently, the product stays the same. So what we can do is group numbers that are more compatible. It's not as easy to multiply 7 times 25 and get a product and then multiply it by 4. It's a lot easier to multiply the 25 times the 4, because there's 4 quarters in a dollar, we can think of 100, and then multiply that by 7 and get a 700. We could even do this mentally, couldn't we? So the associative property of multiplication tells us we can group the factors differently and get the same product. The associative property of addition says that we can group the add-ins differently and get the same sum. See? So it's like a grouping property. And the identity property of multiplication tells us if we multiply a factor by 1, that product will be that factor. Its identity stays the same. So 3 times 1, it's going to stay 3. It keep, that 3 keeps its identity. So notice in the identity property of addition, we're adding a 0 for the 3 to keep its identity. But in the identity property of multiplication, we're multiplying it by a 1, and it keeps its identity. So there's the difference. Addition uses a 0. Multiplication uses a 1. For the distributive property, multiplying a sum of numbers, so we're adding two numbers and getting a sum, so 3 plus 4 is 7. So that's multiplying a sum. 2 times 7 is the sum of those. Multiplying a sum of numbers by a number, 2, is the same as multiplying each add-in. So this is the same as using 2 times 3, which is a 6, and 2 times 4, which is an 8, and adding these together because there's an addition sign between them, and 6 plus 8 is equal to 14. So we can either add what's in the parentheses and then multiply it by this 2, and get a 14, or we can distribute the 2 to the 3, get a product, and add it, because there's an addition sign here, to the product of the 2 times 4. See? We'll get the same sum. So it's like a mother bird giving this little bird 3 worms and this little bird 4 worms. She's going to each one inside. You don't miss any of the numbers inside the parentheses, or the parentheses nest. And this distributive property can be used with multiplication, addition, and subtraction. I'll show you some examples coming up. To add 19 plus 9 plus 1, it's easier to use the commutative property of addition and change their order. So we could put the 1 up in front and add the 19 plus 1 to get a 20, right? And then do 20 plus 9 is 29. Because when you have a very long list of numbers to add, it doesn't matter what order we add them in. We can group compatible numbers. So 
We can add the 3 and the 7 to get a 10. We can add the 8 and the 2 to get a 10. And then we have a 10, 20, and that 6 that's left over. Then we'll have a 26. That'll be a lot easier than adding them in the order that they were given. We can go much quicker. And we can also use the associative property of addition to group them. So if the 1 is in the middle, we can group these and get a 20 and then add the 9 to get a 29. We could even grab, group the 1 and the 9 to make a 10 and add 19 and get a 29. It's just easier when you group compatible numbers. Now, 17 and 13 are more compatible than 39 and 17. So if we see the parentheses around these and it's using addition, we can just use the associative property and regroup it so the 17 and the 13 are together. Because 7 plus 3 is a 10, that's one 10. Here's another 10, and here's another 10. We have three 10s. That's 30. Then it's very easy to add 39. That's 69. It would be a lot easier to add this than it would be to add the 39 to the 17 and then try adding the 13, especially if we're doing mental math, right? To multiply 5 times 48, we can use the distributive property with addition. We can break this 48 into a 40 plus 8. Then we can multiply 5 times 40 and get a 200. We have an addition sign in between them. So we're going to add 5 times 8, which is 40. We add 200 plus 40 and get 240. And we can use the distributive property with subtraction. 48 is just 2 less than 50, isn't it? So we could represent the 48 as a 50 minus 2. Then we can multiply 5 times 50, which is 250. We have a subtraction sign here, so we're going to subtract here. And 5 times 2 is a 10. We can do 250 minus 10. That's 240, just like up here when we broke the 48 into a 40 plus 8. See? So we can use addition or subtraction. Bob buys six video games at $59 each. We can break the 59 into a 50 plus 9. We can do 6 times 50, which is 300, and 6 times 9, which is 54, to do real quick math that he's spending $354. Now, 59 is one less than 60. So we could say it's 6 video games times 60 minus 1 and do 6 times 60, which is 360. See? It's like 6 times 6 with a 0 at the end. See that? Minus 6 times 1, which is 6, and 360 minus 6 is 354. So we could use addition or subtraction with the distributive property to help us do mental math or quick math. See? If we use the distributive property, we can use mental math to solve 4 times 99. 99 is just 1 less than 100, so we could represent 99 as a 100 minus 1. 4 times 100 is 400, minus, because there's a minus sign here, 4 times 1, which is 4, and 400 minus 4 is equal to 396. We can use the distributive property to rewrite an equation and find the answer. So we could use it backwards. If we're given this, we can put it into the mother bird parentheses nest version where one number is outside. Since this is addition, there's going to be addition between the two numbers inside the parentheses. And 23 and 23 are the same, so we can put a 23 out here and just multiply 23 to this 5 and 23 to this 5. See? We could have used, they both have a 5, so we could have put the 5 on the outside and then did 23 plus 23, but those numbers are not as compatible. If we put the 23 on the outside and the 5 plus 5 on the inside of the parentheses here, because remember we're doing reverse distributive property, then we're going to get a 10, and we can do 23 times 10 very quickly as 230. See? Now here's why the associative property does not work for subtraction. If we're given 10 minus 5 in parentheses, so we have to do that first, right? And then we're going to subtract 3. That gives us a 5 minus 3. That's a 2. If we're given 
the 5 minus 3 in parentheses, well, that's a 2, and then we're doing 10 minus 2. That's an 8. So do you see how the associative property does not work for subtraction? We're just not subtracting in the same order, so we end up with a different difference. See? A different answer. And we know the identity property is used when the number stays the same. If we're given a problem and it says 15 plus something equals 15, we see an addition sign and know that it must be a zero because the sum is the same as the add-in. And if we see 15 times something equals 15, we know, because it's multiplication, that's got to be a 1. It's identity property because this factor is the same as the product. So it didn't change. It kept its identity. Okay? So I hope this was helpful. And now you know how to use all the different properties for regular math to do your homework or for mental math. And I hope you find it very useful. I hope you have a great day. I'm really proud of you, and keep trying. I'll see you next video. Bye.